In this video, I'm going to give you 10 reasons why you shouldn't move to Vero Beach. It's usually rainbows and sunshine when watching YouTube videos about moving to X place. So I'm going to give you 10 reasons why you shouldn't move here and why it may not be the right fit for your family. So then at least you can see both sides and you can make the decision for yourself. Jumping straight into the list, this is all relative. So one thing that is a negative could be a positive for someone else. But I think that if you're moving here for the nightlife, this is not the place to move to. Uh, Vero Beach is definitely more retirement oriented. If you're looking to move to the Sunshine State and get to clubs and go out, see the nightlife, try Fort Lauderdale, Miami, West Palm, Tampa, Orlando, um, Jacksonville, some of those other places that are a little bit more lively. This is more of that retirement oriented family lifestyle. So that's something to take into consideration. It's nothing like 6th Street, for example, where they're shutting down the city every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and you're walking the street and getting drunk, hit bar hopping, doing all that stuff. It is more retirement and family oriented. So there is usually one weekend a month where they shut down either on a Friday or Saturday and everyone kind of goes out, local vendors, food trucks. Number two on our list is the climate. So when you're moving to Florida, you expect to see sunshine and beaches, and it is like that, especially during the winter. It's 72 and sunny and beautiful, but in the summers, it gets hot, it gets brutal, and it is the fifth rainiest state. So you mix that with the hot and humid summers, you walk out, you get that sticky, moist feeling, your hair kind of frizzes up, and that's something that you should know when you're moving here. It's not that desert dry heat that some people are used to, but that's something to note is that it's the fifth rainy estate averaging around 53 inches per year. So you're mixing all that with the hot, humid summers, and it could get a little, uh, a little dicey if you're not prepared for it. So just take that in mind. Again, if you kind of average that out, you know, some people are stuck inside when it snows. I'm not a fan of the cold. So, you know, it's what your choice of that is, you know, do you want to be hot and humid for three months on average, or do you want to be stuck in the cold? So just one of those things to note before moving to Vero Beach is that it's not all rainbows and sunshine and beaches. Here. Number three on the list, which some would argue is number one, is the bugs and wildlife. So obviously, a lot of schools are named after the majority of what you would see. So gators, panthers, sharks, those are all here. But some insects that you may have not have known is palmetto bugs. That's something the first time you see it, you would think it's a roach and you're freaking out and you want to leave and run your home. So that's one thing that you just get a nice spray around your baseboards. It gets treated. It's safe for children, dogs. I have two dogs that, you know, they walk around the whole house. They're not licking the baseboards and we're not drinking the chemicals, but you get a nice treatment. They'll come out once a month, spray around your house and everything will be good to go. Other than that, some obvious ones would be snakes, spiders, brown recluse, water moccasins, but every state has their own bugs and wildlife that people take note of and kind of try to stay away from or treat and try to avoid. So that's number three, bugs, wildlife. Number four on the list is the job market. So if you're moving here and searching for a job, while it is growing, it is kind of tough to find certain jobs in Vero Beach, just being that Vero Beach is mostly retirement oriented and a lot of people actually commute to work. So remote workers, that could be a plus. You could avoid some of that stuff, but that's just something to keep in mind. Um, doctors and nurses, that's a plus for you because the largest employer is actually the hospitals. So just keep that in mind when moving to Vero Beach, try to have something lined up or start looking at the jobs in advance. Number five on the list, which is a very obvious one, is hurricanes. While there is a whole season dedicated to hurricanes, and which is called hurricane season, everyone knows that you should be prepared just in case something happens. The occasional hurricane could be really severe, or it could just be a tropical storm, and there may actually be rainstorms worse than hurricanes. Um, so that's just something to take note of, is that hurricanes are a natural disaster that can just ruin and devastate families and homes. But it's one of those natural disasters I would rather have than something like an earthquake that could just, just come out of nowhere and destroy you the whole city. So, um, you know, every, every place has its definition of bad. You could have snowstorms, blizzards, hurricanes, um, really whatever mother nature can throw at you. But at least with the hurricane, you have time to prepare. If it really does get that bad and you want to evacuate, then you definitely have ample time to be ready for it. They'll do a great job in advance, just letting you know every which way possible path. You get your impact windows, you board them up, you have your generator, gas, canned goods, and you just either hunker down or you get ready to go. So it's one of those things that you have to keep in mind when moving to Florida 
and it could un be unavoidable. Um, we've missed a couple this year, but that's just something to keep in mind every year. There's a possibility of hurricanes coming and causing damage. Number six on the list, and again, this is changing with Hero Beach growing as well, but is limited dining. So there are limited dining options compared to the other places that I lived, especially when I was in the military, it was more culturally diverse. You can get any type of food anytime you wanted, especially when you're close to a military base. So that's just something to take into consideration. I also came from Austin, Texas, which had some of the best barbecue. While I'm not saying there's no places to eat here, it's just a different option and is a little bit more limited than you would get in major cities. But Florida is known for its wonderful seafood and Vero Beach does have wonderful spots, especially here in Vero Beach. You can sit down, have a nice dinner and just enjoy scenic views as well. So I'm not saying you can't find any good places to eat. I'm just saying that when you're moving from a culturally diverse place to a smaller town, you have to take that into consideration. Number seven on the list is the lack of public transportation. I actually worked with some people in the military that were from up north and they didn't even have their driver's license until they were around 21 just because it wasn't a necessity for them. There was ways to get around that were more advantageous than purchasing a car and waiting in traffic. So there's nothing here as far as public transportation goes that's super vast and extensive, but that's obvious because it is a small town. Um, there is the club car, go line, Uber, Lyft, those type of things that can help you get around, but it's definitely beneficial to have a car. Number eight on the list, which kind of goes against the whole small town feel, is the traffic is bad. You'll hear some people complain about traffic, but if you're from a major city, you know exactly how bad traffic can get and how it could just be bumper to bumper. It's nothing along those lines unless there's, of course, a wreck, but the traffic could get bad during snowbird season, and I mean bad in a way that um, there's just a bunch of different driving styles coming off over the state just to get to the warm weather. So all these people that are migrating, you have a bunch of different driving styles on top of an older community that's not used to traffic. Something to take note of is it could cause some congestion. People could kind of speed, zip around. But just remember, this is Florida and people love to ride their motorcycles. I know I'm one of them. So just be cautious, look twice, and just take that into consideration if you want to move down here. Number nine on the list, which could apply anywhere, is the housing market. I know the past two, two and a half years with interest rates being really low, the housing market just went crazy and exploded. You mix that with the inventory and new home builders not really building as fast as they were because they don't want to have to deal with the repercussions like 2008. You have all that mixed with Florida being a cash rich state, meaning don't think because you sold your home and you have cash in hand, you're going to get a better deal in Florida. Realtors here are pricing their homes correctly and the ones that aren't, you're seeing multiple decreases. So look at days on market, look at everything you need to, what location fits your budget and area, and just find yourself a good realtor plug if you need help. Just feel free to reach out and I'd be more than happy to assist. We have a whole team of people that are ready to get you guys in a good place. So just keep that in mind when you're moving to Florida that the housing market is still a little crazy here. And it made Forbes top 10 list at number two. So just keep that in mind when you're moving to Florida. Last but definitely not least is food and groceries as well as healthcare is higher in Florida. Food is 11% higher. This list definitely does need updating, but that's just something to keep in mind when budgeting as well as healthcare is 5% higher. So when making your move to Florida, just take note of that and just budget properly. It's not the complete end of the world, but it's definitely something to take note of. So that's it for top 10 reasons you shouldn't move to Vero Beach. I know the list could kind of uh, be relative just depending on what you want and need. But if you are still looking to move to Florida, please feel free to reach out. We are helping multiple people get in the right homes for the right price point that fit their needs. I'll cover everything from the school system to what the price points are, how the market's doing. And if you want to start getting a head start, I have a playlist of homes that you could actually take a look at in Vero and you could kind of narrow that down. If you need help, I'll throw my number on the screen, but I will see you guys in the next video.